That's always, always good. Well, it's my joy now to introduce Julian to you. And um, two years ago, I think I was at the conference, I introduced Julian. And to be honest, I didn't really know Julian that well. I'd been in meetings with him and I liked him. And so I could be kind of nice. But after the last two years, I've traveled quite a lot with Julian and we've laughed a lot and, and uh, tasted lots of different new wines. And we've had a lot of time together and uh, it's been great getting to know him. And last year, he introduced me as a naughty leader. I've waited a year for this. <laughs> but I think, actually, all I can say is, it's a delight to know him. It's a joy to know him. It's a joy to be with him. He's become a dear friend. And working with him and seeing his prophetic spirit and his apostolic work in this nation, I think we've just got to welcome him and all that he is. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew, I think. <laughs> well, Paul, when writing to Timothy... The book of Timothy, when I was in college, uh, it was introduced to me with, from my New Testament survey lecturer as a pastoral and the pastoral letters. And I think sometimes that can be a very helpful approach to it, but sometimes we can put a lens on and we can miss stuff, because whilst it's a pastoral letter, actually it's Paul's letter to a very significant leader to a very significant church, the Ephesus church. It's actually a leadership letter. He didn't actually didn't write it to the church. He wrote it to a leader. And he wrote it to a breakthrough church, Ephesus, that was founded by a breakthrough and a great move of power. And Paul says to Timothy, in one, uh, chapter 1, verse 18, right at the beginning, he gives him this leadership charge. And we're a group of leaders here today. A leadership charge, and he says, Timothy, I'm giving you this charge. In keeping with the prophecies once made about you, recall them, so that by recalling them, you might fight the good fight. Or another way of putting it is, wage a good warfare according to the prophetic words that have been given to you. Timothy, add leadership to the prophetic why are we here today at a prophetic leaders conference? Why as a leadership team with New Wine Cymru, we felt that this was the, 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 the thing we needed to capture at this moment in time. And it's simply this, that in Wales right now, there is a growing prophetic conviction that we could see a great move of God. If I were to put it this way, I think God is poised to move in our nation right now. I think he's ready. It's paper thin away. Paper thin. I think God is not reluctant. I think there's moves and a touch of heaven and a push from heaven coming and he's waiting for us. You see, there's some responses that we make, and then when we make and when we advance, the push of heaven comes. Somebody asked me the other day, guests at our home, and they said to me, Julian, do you think we're going to see, or do you think there's going to be another revival in Wales? And the moment those words came out of this person's mouth, I actually saw a picture in my mind's eye of Michael McIntyre doing a comedy sketch, and you may have seen it, of HD ready TVs. Do you remember it? Have you seen this little sketch where before H we had HD and there was one TV saying, I'm HD, I'm HD ready, and then another TV that wasn't HD ready? Do you remember HD ready TVs? And was, I'm not ready HD TV. And one was all forlorn and dis, dis, you know, crestfallen because that little television wasn't HD and one was HD. And we had a HD ready TV before we had HD. Do you remember that? We actually bought a new TV because the old one was rubbish and we had a nice flat screen TV and it looked amazing and it was really swanky and it had HD ready on it and I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> but a day came when there was a switch over from analog to digital and we got three HD channels. Woohoo! And it was brilliant. 
And when this lady said to us, do you think you're going to see a revival? I saw that picture in my mind's eye. And I said to her, well, I actually didn't answer. I didn't answer a question. I said, I'll tell you one thing. We are revival ready. Now, I'm going to qualify this. I really don't like using the word revival very much because we've had revival. Sometimes it can put us in a mindset where the future is going to be like the past and we miss the present because we're actually looking for something like in the past. And we've got to be really careful. And we were stalking in our team meeting yesterday the different ways the glory of God can turn up. The glory of God can turn up like a miracle. When Jesus turned water into wine, he says, this is how he revealed his glory. The glory of God can turn up like a weight of his presence, like a cloud when Solomon's temple turned up. The glory of God can turn up like actually having a meal with your friends in the presence of God when the elders and the 72 went up to the mountain and they encountered the presence of God. And it says they ate and sat and drank in the presence of God. The glory of God can can manifest itself in beautiful intimacy. We behold the glory of God in the face of Christ. And that's talking about beautiful intimacy. The glory of God can manifest its way in many, many different ways in any moment in time. And we need to be careful that we don't have a stereotypical view of it because when it comes, we might miss it. So what we need is discerning hearts, not preconditioned hearts. But we're HD ready. <laughs> we're, we are ready for a move of God. The world is ready. The world is ready for a move of God. When we went out onto the streets, as Steve said, we were shocked and surprised. If we'd done that five years ago and said, can I tell you about Jesus and God's love for you, most of us would have got black eyes or abusive ears. But this time, so many people said, yes, please. And even when they didn't respond or pray a prayer to receive Christ into their lives, they said, thank you very much. You're doing a great work. We promptly spoke to about 20,000 people, just at rough estimates. 5,000 of those said, yes, I would like to pray a prayer and receive Jesus into my life. We'll leave the ultimate response to God because God only knows the hearts. But the fact that they responded in that way, and even when they didn't, they were grateful, that is openness. The world is ready. Young people are ready. Your friends are ready. People down the gym are ready. Ready for a church to bring them Christ. So the world is ready for a move of God. The church in Wales is ready for a move of God. God over the last nine or ten years, and before of course, and outside of, these, of the New Wine Cymru movement, it's not exclusive in any way, so hear me properly, but in the last nine or ten, amongst us as New Wine, he's been doing an amazing thing. What's he been doing? He has been producing unity across the nation of so many leaders and churches. Not just unity, but friendship, the diversity. We've got Anglicans, we've got Baptists, we've got Salvation Army, we've got Catholics, we've got New Church, we've got Old Church. There is unity. And you wouldn't know the difference. Here we are together as 22 denominations represented across the movement. And we like each other. That's a miracle. <laughs> we love each other. We tease one another. We feel at home. I mean, for goodness sake. I said to myself, he's feeling at home. <laughs> Having a face time on the floor. He feels comfortable. There's unity. There's friendship. And with that, there is strength. There's a kingdom vision. One heart, one mind. See this nation one. See the nations touched by the move of God. There's a Holy Spirit anointing. We are a Holy Spirit people. We see miracles. We see the prophetic. We see it. We're seeing more miracles across our nation than we've seen for years. We see miracles. We see healings. The prophetic is released. There's a forged fever. Ephesians ministries, cross-pollinating, whatever that means. <laughs> but in other words, pastors and teachers and evangelists and apostles, and we, we go to one another's churches, we're working together, we're influencing 
one another. And this is, this is Christ's delivery system to the church. God gave the Ephesians 4 ministries so that the church may be equipped to do the work of the ministry, that we may attain unity in the knowledge of the Son of God and ultimately come into his fullness. And as we cross-pollinate, as we influence and infect one another, we, we deposit Christ to one another. And that because there's unity and because we're working together and because there's collaboration, the whole measure of Christ is beginning to come to us. We're not there yet. We're on a journey. But it's, it's Christ's delivery system. And there's safety in that. There's support in that. So when God moved in 1904... Evan Roberts, 27 years old, I think, amongst the teenagers, amazing move of God, lasted 18 months or so, and he had a breakdown. Why? Because he didn't have this. He didn't have this. Leaders together, brothers and sisters, friends, championing one another, didn't have this. Didn't have the support, didn't have the backing. When Peter on the day of Pentecost, after he was broken and fearful through rejecting Christ, it says he stood up amongst his 11 with the, with the others. He stood up. They gave him strength. We have strength in one another. We have safety in one another. There's an accountability that is volunteered and relational and authentic. It's safe. It's good. So that when a move of God comes that I believe we are ready for, it can be sustained. You see the thing about moves of God, have you noticed how sometimes they can come suddenly and they can go suddenly? But when I look at the book of Acts, I don't see the wind of the Spirit coming suddenly and going suddenly. I see a movement, a missionary movement of the church that prevailed year after year after year after year after year. And the whole, they didn't need reviving because it was a part of their lifestyle. And I believe because of what God is doing amongst us and has been doing with our friendships, with our love, with our collaboration, with our mutual accountability and how we're learning from one another, how we're correcting one another, how we're growing together, that as the Spirit of God moves because of our together, it can, there's, a, there's an opportunity for something to be sustained and matured. You know, when the church was birthed, and we, we thank God for the early church and see the glory of it, and it's our model, and we look to it, but it was the birth of it. The church, through the Ephesians 4 ministry, that's, I'm speaking to us, all leaders in the room, the church who are togetherness and a collaboration, uh, the saints are quit that we may grow into maturity, grow into full manhood, grow into the fullness of Christ. We grow from infancy into maturity, and the closer we get to the finish, the closer we get to Christ's return, the more mature we, we can be. So the more maturity means you can carry responsibility, you can carry weight. Weight, responsibility. And there's a weight and a responsibility and a calling upon our church and on our nation together. And I think we are coming to a place where we are being readied by God. In the worship, I sensed so strongly it was as if the Holy Spirit was calling us into rank, shoulder upon shoulder, rank upon rank, line upon line, tribes and the armies getting in position in spirit ready, lining up for a charge from heaven, ready for the time when the trumpet goes and we, and we run and we charge together and there's a building of strength and there's almost, almost the, the, the Holy Spirit, like the super general, putting all, the, all of the church and the nation in place, ready for what he's going to do. And there's a time very soon, and I won't put a time scale on it, but you know the thing about the prophetic, it's John said in the book of Revelation, come soon. <laughs> We're still waiting. When, when Paul spoke to the Corinthian church about whether you should get married or not, he says, well, because of the presenceness and the closeness of the Lord's return, I think you should remain single. <laughs> he had such a sense of imminence of the Lord's presence and his return. Don't worry if you're thinking about getting married. Get married. <laughs> Just in case you all go say, oh, God's spoken to me. You know? No. I'm, I'm, it's an illustration, not a prophecy. <laughs> That's the thing about the prophetic. You know, you can't put a time on it, but in the spirit, because God speaks out of time, it's always now. 
because he's, he's always living, he's outside of time, he's always in the now. So when you pick it up, it's always soon. So we don't know, but in spirit we must live as if it's now, present, imminent. And I believe that we are, must live for a, a second wind of heaven, like a second Pentecost, or a, a, it's a time of prophetic activation. Now, leadership, it's not enough. I love leadership, I'm a fan of leadership, it's not enough. Prophecy, it's not enough. I love prophecy, it's not enough. But when leadership and the prophetic marry, you get advance. You see, leadership builds, and we must build. We must build on this book. We must build on the principles of this book. Leadership builds, teaching the principles. We must never let go of this book, this word. Leadership builds, but the prophetic advances. You, as a leader, you build, but when you activate the prophetic, you advance. And you can't advance unless you've built well. Every major advance in our ministry in the church has come through activating the voice of God, hearing God, and then moving out on it. Every major. When we bought this building, we were looking for a building for years and years and years, and then Clem came along. And we saw this building. We didn't tell the church. And Clem came along to a meeting, and nobody knew except the leadership that we'd seen it, and not even Clem. And one night, he said, mm, I've got to say this, I can see another building for you. I can see a massive car park. He says, people are going to think that they're going shopping, and they're going to turn up at your place. Because this was a former Aldi supermarket. And he began to explain, uh, describe the building and how God was going to provide for it. And he said, don't say it's too big. Don't say it's too small. Don't say you don't need it. Look to me. I'm Jehovah Jireh. Look to me. And he began to prophesy what God was going to do in this building. And he says, I'm going to command the people to come in. And when we held our first New Wine Cymru conference here, and everybody came in and all the chairs, I turned to Adam the elder. And we, it was our very, very first meeting. And I looked at Adam and I said, this place is too small. <laughs> but we had a major advance through that prophetic activation. Through, through actually saying, we're too small, we can't afford it, we can't do it, we're scared. But we are going to activate the prophetic. We're going to do something with it. We're going to add leadership to the prophetic. And when we add leadership to the prophetic, when we wage a good warfare according to the prophecies, we moved out on it, we had a breakthrough. And you are recipients of that breakthrough as well. You are here because of it. It's been a tool for us as a church, it's a tool for New Wine Cymru, and we have found time and time again our community work, our buildings, our ministries, our, our finances, our soul, our soul winning, our miracles, it's all come, the advances all come when God has spoken and we added leadership to the prophetic. So we must build well biblically, and we add leadership to the prophetic. Leadership builds the prophetic advances. Leadership, the, leadership is, the leadership engine is powered through prophetic movement. When leadership is applied to the prophetic, it brings breakthrough in our battles and our warfare. So when Paul says, Timothy, wage a good warfare according to your prophecies. Now, the word warfare, what does it mean? It means this in the Greek. It's where you get strategy from. Strategy. Strategy is a leadership function. So here's the thing. You can get a prophetic word, and if you don't add leadership, you say, God has spoken, he'll do it, and you'll wait forever. Nothing happens. You can, you can wait until your season, your, your prophetic words go past their sell-by date. Prophetic words have a sell-by date. And you can wait so long that they pass their sell-by date. But, but what, God says, what Paul says to Timothy, this leader of this major church, he says, get your leadership hat, Timothy. 
and recall your prophecies, get them out, think about them, recall them, and begin to strategize like a general in the light of the prophetic things that God has spoken to you. And when leaders add the strategy to the prophetic, you get the advance. That's when you get the breakthrough. That's when the push of heaven comes. We build well, and you can do a lot through building well. But when we strategize in the light of our prophecy, and we come obedient to it, we submit to it, that's when the breakthrough comes. That's when the push of heaven comes. Now, God has been saying a lot to us over these last years about a move of God. And in recent days, over the last year, the New Wine Cymru team have been getting our prophetic words out and dusting them down, and we have been meeting together to develop strategies and look at developing strategies around what God has said. So Clem, who's going to speak in the next session, who's a trusted friend and a prophet to us and to Wales, he had a time with the national team in 2017, it was in January, it was before we actually did the mission or anything like that. And he began to uh, bring prophetically some stuff. And here's some of the stuff that we've been looking at. One, and you're going to resonate with this. One of the things he said is this. <clears throat> God is going to bring a new breed of church in Wales. There's going to be a DNA change. And, there's going to, and it's going to be like Jacob when he took the poplar box when he was working for Laban and he wanted to marry Leah and Rachel, uh, Rachel and he stripped the box and he put them in a trough and the sheep came and drank of the water that the, bark, that the, the sticks were in of their stripped bark and as a result of that there was a genetic code change within the sheep and they got a new breed of sheep a stronger and better breed a healthier breed they were more robust. And we've been thinking about this a lot. Now I'll tell you what this is. Leaders. As our bark is stripped, like it is today, you don't know whether you're a Pentecostal or an Anglican, whether you're a Methodist or a Salvation Army or a new church. Here we are with our bark stripped. Soaking in the same spirit, our worship, the presence of God. And not only does that do something in us and it begins to inform and transform and change us as the delivery systems of of, of leadership begin to infect and change us and mature us and grow us. But as our people, our congregations, the congregations in your church begin to see it and they come to see what God is doing and drink of the same spirit that we are drinking as, as they see our love, as they see our unity, as they see our friendship, as they see our support, as they see us collaborating and working together, and drink of the same spirit, God will perform a miracle. He will will do something in the church that will bring a spiritual genetic change where a new breed of church will emerge. I don't mean an unbiblical church. I think it'll look a lot like Acts 2, grown up. And so we've been thinking and strategizing, thinking how, are we gonna, how can we expose the rest of the church to what God is doing amongst us? So we're going to look at some regional tours, and we'll talk about that at a later time. We also had a prophetic word about an unprecedented move of God. Clem prophes- but we've had that a number of times, like a move of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to come back to something. Smith Wigglesworth. An unprecedented move of God. Clem said this. He said, you can't call it Pentecostal. And you can't call it charismatic. It will be marked by evangelism and healings and salvations. And it will be like a wave of salvations that will go to the nations. It will come in words and go to the nations. And it will be infectious. And, and people will say, I don't know what to call it. I don't have a name for it. And you'll be known as the Holy Spirit people. You can give me that. I like that. The Holy Spirit people. But I want to say this. Right now, We are a Holy Spirit people. We are. 
we, we, we are comfortable with the presence of God. We love the presence of God. We, we, we are comfortable with the prophetic. We see healings. We're going to see healings in the next two days. We're going to pray for people, and right where you're sitting, people will be healed. I have no shadow of a doubt about it. In some point of the worship, we're going to do healing, and God is going to heal people. I have no shadow of a doubt. People will be healed here today and tomorrow. We see healings. So often when the prophetic comes, it doesn't actually come out of the blue with, well, I didn't expect that. It comes into a context of a work that God is already doing and germinating, but the prophetic comes to elevate your sight. And we can take courage that God's saying there's going to be a, a move of God, a mighty move of the Spirit. Now, you and I, in our flesh, I think to myself, oh my goodness, I hope we can cope with that. But I want to encourage you so that you don't have to be too afraid. I want to encourage you. You're not unfamiliar with the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, it will be familiar to you. The healings and the presence and the power. But what will be different is it, it's like when Elijah's cloud came, I can hear the sound of rain. And he saw the rain and he prayed it in. That was a prophetic strategy to a prophetic word. Rain's coming, strategy, pray. He prayed it in. And then when he could see it, he said to the king, get going, heavy rain's coming, it'll overtake you. And, the, and he hitched up his loincloth and ran in the power of the Holy Spirit and passed Ahab's chariot. But let me tell you this. The only thing that will be different in one sense, uh, not the only thing, but so don't quote me on this, is it, it'll be the pace, the intensity, and the power. The pace, the intensity, the power will go up, but you will be familiar with the Holy Spirit because you know him, and he has been preparing you. He's been readying you. HD ready. Prophetic word about what's happening in Wales is going to go to the nation, so get ready to go. And every time God moves in Wales, it always goes around the nations. It's, we're not the strongest nation in the world. We're not the most significant in the nation. In fact, we are hugely insignificant. A lot of people don't even know it exists. However, a spark starts a fire. And what God does in Wales is, is sparks. And sparks start fires. And we can start fires anywhere. And when a wind of wildfire goes, nobody controls it. We don't want control. We don't want ownership. We just want the spark. And Jesus gets the glory. And, does, and they give it away. And we talked about prayer. And stadiums being full. And when the world know that whales are praying, they're going to, I love this, watch online around the world. And Clem prophesied over Bruce, and he didn't know that Bruce, if one thing you know about Bruce, he bangs on about one thing all the time if you know him really well. I say this lovingly, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's one of his themes, and it's wonderful. And when Clem, he turned to Bruce and said, Bruce, you're going, to prophesy, you're going to pray for more people to be filled with the Holy Spirit in one day than you have in the whole of your lifetime. He says there's going to be people in other nations, illustrated like Taiwan, Taiwan, going to be listening online to when you have these prayer gatherings, and you're going to say, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and in Taiwan, people are going to receive the Holy Spirit and be filled. Can you imagine such a thing? I can. Sarah and I were taking a meeting in uh, New Wine, England, on one occasion. Do you remember this, Sarah? And we asked the Lord to heal people, and we got everybody to heal. And then we had... Um, emails coming through where people have been sitting in their front room joining in the prayers and got healed. Isn't that amazing? God can do that. Jesus said to the Father, this hour he's been healed. Go home. Doesn't have to be there. So, a next generation rising up. Attracted, not by power, but by servanthood humility and love oh I would love that don't you like that he says the marks of the sheep you know those, those Jacob sheep they came out with marks 
the marks of the church in Wales. Humility, servanthood, and love. And those marks being incredibly attractive to an emerging generation. Let's do that, shall we? Can we, can we just decide to walk in humility with all of our brokenness and failures can we decide to walk in love and you know we might not be the best preachers in the world we might not be the most clever people the most wise people hey we're not are we let's face it we're not but i tell you one thing everybody can do every one of us can do we can serve we can all go a little lower. That's all within our grasp. We can all choose humility. We can choose to love. We can choose to forgive. We can choose to serve. We can choose not to take offense. We can choose to embrace. We can choose those things. We can choose those marks of a new breed church that will actually authenticate Christ, his message, who we are, and be attractive to an emerging generation. We can do that. impartation and the laying on of hands that when we lay hands upon people they receive the power of the Holy Spirit and gifts of the Holy Spirit and everything that the church needs interesting that Paul says to Timothy in this pastoral book to a leader leader stir up the gifts that have been given to you through the laying on of hands do you know what let me just throw this aside. Often in our church life, uh, I need and we need as a team certain gifts, gifts of wisdom. and Also, you know, often I pray for them to come in. And I think, do you know what? I should be making more use of the delivery system of the Holy Spirit that Christ has given me as a leader. Whew. Gifts of wisdom. Gifts of the prophetic. Gifts of discernment, gifts of mercy. Yeah. I think there's more for us to discover. And one of the distinctives, prophetically, that has been spoken to us, that we'll be a Holy Spirit people that will impart and release and empower. Impart, release, and empower. And that's what Jesus did all the time. He imparted, released, and power. He gave them power. He gave them authority. He sent them. He laid hands on them. He gave them the spirit. He gave, give it away. 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 <laughs> don't control. Get away. Don't control. Give it away. We don't have to control it. We don't have to brand it. We don't have to put our name upon it. Just give it away. Give it away. The more we do that, <laughs> let this be a mark of who we are. Releasing, empowering, sending. So in 1947, Smith Wigglefirst prophesied this. During the next few days, there will be two distinct moves of the Holy Spirit across the church in Great Britain. The first move will affect every church that has been open to receive it and will be characterized by a restoration of the baptism of the gifts and the Holy Spirit. The second move of the Holy Spirit will result in people leaving historic churches and planting new churches. Well, that's happened. In the duration of each of these moves, the people who are still involved will say, this is a great revival. But the Lord says, no, neither of these is the great revival, but are steps towards it. When the new church phase is on the wane, it is. Uh, we're, we're part of the new church movement, charismatic movement. I, we said many, many years ago, the charismatic movement is, is over. We're, we're living in the fruit of it, but in terms of the move. It's on the, so when the church move, first church phase is, is on the wane, there will be evidence in these churches of something that has not had been seen before. A coming together of those who emphasize the word and the spirit. And when word and spirit come together, there will be the biggest move of the Holy Spirit that the nation has indeed, this world has ever seen. It was in 1947. Now one thing that authenticates a prophecy when half of it has already come true. It will mark the beginning of a revival that will eclipse anything that's been witnessed within the shores, even the Wesleyan and the Welsh revivals of former years. The outpouring of God's spirit will flow over the United Kingdom to mainland Europe, and there it will begin a missionary movement to the ends of the earth. Now it speaks about a nationwide move. 
And it happens in two folds. One, the local. The local church is important. The local church is the church that changes communities. The local church is where it gets done. Local churches change nations. We must, oh, this is all about the margins, the fringes, the ends. We must empower the local church. That's why leaders matter. That's why you matter. That's why your teams matter. That's why your people matter. It's all about what you do and what I do when we go home on Monday and we're working with our people in our communities. It's about the local church. And I want to say to you then, local church leaders, some of you are praying for breakthroughs, longing for breakthroughs, and need breakthroughs, and need advance. And you've had prophetic words, and you're wondering when. Can I just encourage you, get those strategies out and put your leadership hat on, and say, what are we gonna do as a leadership in the light of the prophetic words that have been given to us? What does it mean? You get them all out. You look at the common themes. What is God beginning to say consistently so you, so you work the consistency out? You, you put them all together. Then you seek wisdom. You say, okay, Lord, give us wisdom. Where, what do we give our attention to first? You say, well, I don't have wisdom. It doesn't matter because the Bible says if you lack wisdom, ask and he'll give it to you. And this is where wisdom comes. When you pray and you discuss as a leadership team with a good heart, you'll be surprised how much wisdom comes. It's, a, it's an environment where God loves to deposit wisdom. Wisdom is in the counsel of many. And when you ask in a good heart of your team, he will step into that mean. And in your discussion, you will find a wisdom that resonates. And, you, and it, it, it might feel something like this. It seems good to us and the Holy Spirit. And we do this. And so they had a strategy. They set a port part on the bottom of us. They strategized and they sent them out and they had a plan to go which churches to go and when and how. And there's a time frame. And because they activated the prophetic, continents came to Christ. And we're the recipients of it today. So go home, local church leaders, with your teams. Get your prophetic out. Categorize them. Ask for wisdom. Put a time frame around them. What steps must we do? What strategies shall we take? And when you do those things, heaven's resources will be given. Breakthroughs will come. Advance will happen. Miracles will take place. Some of them will be building miracles. Some of them will be people miracles. Some of them will be financial miracles. Some of them will be healing miracles. Open us in the community. You will be amazed what God will do when you add leadership to the prophetic and that will give you the push that you need Timothy wage a good warfare according to your prophecies it's a leadership wisdom so the local church is vital however a nationwide move needs a nationwide church because God isn't going to give it to one person one ministry one movement he's not giving it to New Wine Cymru alone or the Cornerstone, or the Baptists, or the Pentecostals, and they're all brilliant. But, but a nationwide church, a move of God for nationwide, needs to be stu- stewarded by the church. And so, so that's why it's good that we're here together, to play our part, because we can't do it alone. And Wales will bring change through churches advancing together. And it's a huge challenge for leaders. I tell you why it's a challenge for leaders. Because we're tired. Local church leadership is tired. I know how tired you are. I know how beaten up you are. I know what it's like when we're misunderstood and we get it wrong. And I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be disappointed. And the hope gets ripped out of you again. I know what it's like to struggle on very little and have a vision that you just can't ever see how it could ever pass. I know what it's like to wake up in the middle of the night and go down on your knees, and there you are in your front living room, and the only word you can say is, help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. I know what that's like. So it's a huge challenge because it's hard and it's tired. But that's why we need to be fueled by the prophetic, inspired and have our faith built because that's what the prophetic does. The, the prophetic energizes. It puts fire back into you. It, 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 it causes you to pick yourself up on your feet by faith in the prophetic and by hope again and stand and take another step. And that's why the Lord sent the prophetic in the New Testament to leaders first, you know. 
leaders first. Okay, I'm going to really close this real quick, and it is coming to close. Haggai, when I read this in preparation for this talk, I thought this is a word of God for Wales. And I just open your hearts to this and see if you witness with me this. I'll read it. On the 21st day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Speak to Sezubral, governor of Judea, Joshua the high priest, their leaders, and to the remnants. It's not just for leaders, but it comes to leaders first. Speak to Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, to Joshua the high priest. Ask them, who of you is left who saw the house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem like nothing? Be strong, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord, for I am with you, says the Lord Almighty. My spirit remains amongst you. Do not fear. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the dry land and the sea. Well, I think that's happening. I mean, Brexit fears. People and a clue what's going on. I will shake the nations, and what is desired by all the nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord. The glory of this present house. Ooh, haven't we just had a prophecy about that? The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord. And in this place, I will grant peace. Do you see what happens? The prophetic comes to leaders, you, in this room. Leaders, why? To build strength, to give vision, to remove fear, to give confidence, to provide reassurance, to make sense of what is coming, to activate you and your people, to build and move together, to restore and to establish and give faith and provision for what God's going to do. That's what the prophetic does. That's why leaders need it. That's why we marry leadership and the prophetic. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. Do not give up gathering together. Don't give up gathering together. Strengthen one another as you see the day approaching. Well, there's a day when he's approaching, Jesus is coming. But there's a day when the Lord, by the power of his spirit, is coming. Do not give up. Don't give up meeting in your regions. Don't give up meeting in lead up. Don't give up meeting in the worship conference, the women who lead conference. Don't give up meeting in this event. Don't give up meeting over coffees and cups of teas. Don't give up meeting as you cross pollinate. Don't give up. Encourage one another, for the day is approaching. And add prophecy to leadership strategy. And as we do this, what we will do, we will see that there will be a push from heaven and advance a breakthrough, a mobilization. There are some things that God is going to do without us. Praise God, because he's God. And there's some things he's going to do, and he's waiting for us. And, and it is the prophetic strategy and leadership that is the waiting for us component. The things that God has put in your hands prophetically. Build well, strategize according to prophetic, so let's pray for God to speak to us in these days. Let's pray for every leader to hear. Let's pray for faith to be birthed through what we hear in our hearts. That grace will be given to us that we may do something strategically and wisely with what we hear. Pray for the wisdom we need. Pray for the breakthrough, the advance. Pray for God to move locally in your church. I just know this so strong. Some of you are going to go back and you are going to strategize as a result of this and you're going to see the breakthroughs that you've been longing for. And it's just been a matter of waiting for you to do it. Pray for the breakthroughs locally and pray for the advance in our nation together. Yeah. Let's not let go of what we got here. Let's labor to maintain it. Yeah. Don't think the enemy won't challenge it. Labor to maintain it. Guard it, preserve it, love it, thank God for it. Stand together. Because God wants to give a nation and he wants to spark something in nations and we need to be together for that. So let's bow our heads and ask for the help of God.
To you, O oh God, we give the glory. We thank you for the hand of God upon our nation in the past that we thank you for and the spiritual DNA that you've put in us for moves of God. We thank you for all the prophetic promises that have been building and stacking and the thousands and maybe millions of prayers that have been prayed because of this prophetic sense over many, many years and even people around the world who have been moved by you to pray for Wales. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for every prayer and every person. We thank you for the privilege of leadership. And we humble ourselves before you because of its responsibility. And we praise you that you give everything we need. You give wisdom. And we pray in this moment that now a deposit of wisdom will come upon every leader that we may have the spirit of wisdom that combines with revelation that we may know you better and what you want to do better and how we need to respond to you better to see your push from heaven that, that thing that only you can do that we can't do but you respond as we obey so come Holy Spirit and let our ears be open and deposit faith in our spirit and give us diligent hearts to not despise prophecy hold on to the good test all things and do what wisdom requires with what you've given in Jesus name Amen